Welcome back, guys. So today, I wanted to talk about my firing process. It's kind of changed over the past year or so. Um, this is specifically for pit fire pottery. Uh, no kill needed. All you need is wood. <clears throat> and I want to talk about just what I do now. Some of it is the same, some of it has changed. And this is just due to my pots and how they've been reacting to the different firings that I've been doing. So you can see in the beginning, I made a fire. You wanna make it pretty sizable. Um, if you have logs, toss some logs on there. You're really trying to build up an ember, uh, ember bed. Once you build up your fire, make sure you get your pots and put them around the fire like I'm doing now. And as, as one side of the pot warms up, you spin your pot around so that the other side can warm up. And this is the act of uh, wicking your, your pots, which is just getting that moisture out before you really start to envelop it in the heat and the fire and the flames. So the wicking part is very, is very detrimental to this process. If you don't wick it long enough, it could possibly explode or crack. Uh, so you really want to get as much moisture out before you really enclose it in the fire. And you'll see what I'm talking about here in a few. I'd also suggest that, you know, if you're going to be doing uh, this style of firing, wear some shoes. I'm not wearing any shoes because you know, I, that's just the way I live my life, but definitely wear some shoes. The coals do get um, out of the fire and you could step on them, which I have done in the past and it doesn't feel good. So the logs are about 50% burn up, the ones on the outside. The ones on the inside have turned into some nice coals and I am just taking them out and placing them on the outer edge of this kind of like stone barrier I have. And all you wanna do is just keep opening it up and placing them out and around. Try and make it into a circle. Try and make it as wide as you can within within that boundary. Um, you don't want it to be touching anything organic because you know it will start a fire. But definitely open it up because you're going to be putting all of your pots into the middle of this opening. So if you have a lot of pots and you're worried about stacking them up on top of each other, you just don't want to stack them up on top of each other, then you're going to need a uh, you know, a sizable area to fire all of your pottery. So just make sure you have enough wood that you can burn to make coals and also enough firewood that you can open it up and it can still get that radiant heat to all the pots that you're going to be putting in here. So after opening it up, I scrape the middle out, all the coal, all those hot coals in the middle, I'm just scraping them out to the sides. I don't want my pots to actually touch any of the coal yet. They have been licked, so moisture should be out of them. Um, but there is also a chemical bond of water in there, H2O, that 
has to get out of there past the boiling temperature and there might be parts deeper into the pottery where that H2O chemical bond is not out yet and if you put it straight onto the coal it might rapidly increase the temperature and that H2O chemical bond could try to escape and explode some of your pottery. So make sure that if you're new to this, scrape all, well, even if you're not new to this, make sure you're not letting your pottery touch the coals just yet. Um, I'll show you what it should look like and when you should actually let your pottery touch the coal. So right now it's touching ash, and it's just touching the warm ground. The ground shouldn't have any moisture in it. It should be, you know, warm now, and this radiant heat on the outside is what's gonna be doing some more wicking for my pieces before I actually try and let flame and cold touch them. So all I was doing was putting more dry sticks around the outside and now I'm getting smaller twigs or my son right here is getting smaller twigs and breaking them off and uh, helping me just get ready to put these into some of the cracks and like crevices that need to get filled up. You don't want a lot of open spaces when you're making this circle. You want to start to fill it up with wood and that'll keep building up that heat, keep building up that heat, but it'll do it slowly. You know, it won't do it very rapidly, especially if you're putting on, you know, thicker pieces like right here. It's going to warm up that that wood but it won't burn it just yet only whenever you start to add these twigs and start to fill up some of these smaller spaces these twigs will start to ignite and then that'll start almost like a, a trail trailing effect you know it starts at where the twigs start and then it burns that smaller one and then it starts to burn the log again and then it starts to envelop this entire circle and by the time the entire circle was enveloped in flames your pottery should be to the point where it's wicked and it's at a high enough temperature that it can touch flame and it can start touching coal. Um, but that takes time. So I think right now it's been about maybe an hour to an hour and a half of um, just wicking, you know, just letting the pottery get used to that temperature and slowly raising the temperature of the pottery. Because remember, if you raise it too high too quickly, it will crack. It's called thermal shock. So you want your pottery to get used to the heat. And you can see, you know, it kind of touches, kind of touches the back in here and um, that is just smut. It adds, the clay pores haven't actually opened up to absorb that carbon on that figurine. It has on that one right there, that, that piece right here that I'm about to show you. This one has actually absorbed black, uh, uh, a black tint to it. That's from the carbon, um, being released from all of the burning organics and it is warm it, it's warm enough now to absorb that and turn it to a blacker color uh, and so that's what you're really looking for you want to see your pottery start to turn black turn into a black tint um, and that just means that your clay is getting warm enough to absorb the carbon from the organic matter around it. So that's around, I think, like five to 600 degrees. 
and it's specifically it's only absorbing on one side so you need to make sure that you're constantly turning your pots and making sure that it's getting all of the sides heated up and then at the same time keep closing in your circle keep closing in your circle i'm constantly closing my circle in and adding new new pieces of wood to my circle to keep the heat going and I'm constantly rearranging pieces so that it continues to burn and it continues to give out that radiating heat. So now it looks like I'm actually letting it touch the clay now. It should be around maybe the hour 45, two hour mark. And I'm really starting to close in some of these, especially where some of the clay is darker. I am trying to put more heat there, get more heat going there, and try and really close in this circle now and get a lot of the coal closer to the pottery get it closer to your pieces you don't want to lay if, if, if the wood that you're burning is really heavy you don't want to lay it directly on top but laying it on the side of it and around it um, if you're gonna lay it above it like I'm doing right there make sure that the pieces below it or are the same thickness or maybe even a little bit thicker and that'll just ensure that it's not going to just burn and fall onto it and, and crack it and so now i am i feel like they're heated enough to where i can actually put them on top of the coal and let the flame really engulf them and what i'm trying to do here is i'm trying to get the bottom fired and the bottom is the main thing that I really worry about getting fired when I'm doing pit fires because if you just left it in the circle and you kept closing that circle up well the ash covers the bottom of your pot so the bottom of your pot is going to be the hardest thing to fire so now what I like to do when I do my pit fires is I make sure that I start rearranging the wood and my pots where my pots actually start sitting on top of the wood in these hot pockets of fire and coal to really fire the bottom pieces because eventually I want to have all these pieces on top of hot coal fire and flame so it really fires it and I can really hold water and know that it'll be okay in like a wet or moist conditions you know uh, so what I'm really trying to do here is just get all these pieces on top of coal and just get them into direct heat And now you can see that I'm taking more of the pieces from the outside circle and putting it into the middle of the circle and getting some of these pieces fired. And eventually all these pieces will be back into the center. They won't be just randomly arranged in places. I'll place them back into the center. They'll be on top of uh, coals on top of flame and it's a really good way to get an updraft so that it's constantly burning and constantly being fired uh, I really like doing it this way just because I know it's gonna have a constant heat and if it's if, if you've wicked it right and you've made sure that it is dried right and has gone up the temperature slowly enough 
then you shouldn't have any cracking or um, spalding. But I did actually have some spalding on one of these. I think it's the one in the back there. Uh, it ended up exploding. The bottom, yeah, right there, it ended up exploding. And that's just because my bot, the bottom of my pot was too thick and I didn't allow it to wick long enough before setting it onto the log. So make sure that you, uh, if anything, maybe turn your pots upside down and you know, one hour of wicking with it right side up and then flip it to where the, the last hour of wicking is um, upside down and that way you can get kind of an even even wicking on the top and the bottom and on your sides and so once I got it all back into the middle here I got a little barrier made sure that none make sure that no pressure from your logs are actually going onto the clay pots and then once you've done that they're consolidated back into the middle start putting on thinner limbs thinner limbs on top you can allow these you can you can lay these directly onto the pots because you know as long as you're not throwing them down on there they're okay they'll they'll be able to withstand that kind of pressure and this is what it should look like after they've been fully fired so i think this is maybe four to five hours in uh, fully fired I let everything burn out after I put that top layer so if you really want to get some good markings on your pots then I suggest pulling your pots out at the peak temperatures so right here would be a good time for you to pull your pots out uh, not at this point right here ash. Um, you can see that it was still warm, it was still hot, it still got some markings on it, but there were certain places where it had already cooled down too much and I couldn't get the markings that I wanted to. So just make sure that you're actually, if you want to do uh, like a porch hair rack do or anything with organics, make sure you're pulling it out at the peak temperature peak hot um, and the, the when I pulled it out it really wasn't doing much except where it was sitting directly on the pole everywhere else it wasn't hot enough really to keep the organics on them so if that's something that you want to do I actually have more videos of it check out my channel um, I'll probably leave a link somewhere. But yeah, that's that's really it for the firing process. I'm gonna go ahead and show you uh, the next day what it looks like. All right, guys. So if you did everything correctly, then a good way to test to see if your pots are truly fired all the way. Uh, this is if you don't have like a, if you didn't have like a heat gun or something like that checking the pots constantly while they were in the fire the ring test is always a good test to do so it should have a nice ring to it whenever you flick it I also like to do the fingernail test which is pushing into it and seeing if you're seeing if you can leave like a mark or if you can leave an indentation um, I can scratch this with my fingernail but it shouldn't be soft enough to where I'm pulling off big pieces the bottom of this one is still uh, well no maybe it's not I'm gonna say maybe the bottom of this is soft but yeah it's not It's not leaving any marks. Um, even with this crack, this is just supposed to be from the sodium silicate that I did. Uh, even with cracks in it, or even when it spalds, does spalding, which is like 
these explosions if it's too moist or if it's too thick. Um, this one, the bottom of this was too thick, so when I went to go heat the bottom of this one up, it ended up exploding the bottom, but it still has a nice ring to it. The only times you won't have a nice ring is whenever, uh, whenever your pot is actually cracked. So from like the surface to the inside, if it was cracked all the way through, then you wouldn't hear that ring. But it still has perfect structure on the inside. So the only other thing to test would be to see if it can hold water. And earthenware can hold water, but they're very porous, so it will precipitate uh, onto the surface of your clay pot. So just keep that in mind, it, if you do see water on it and it has been fired properly, it may just be because uh, it's earthenware and it's porous, it's very porous. But other than that, yeah, that's, that's really all you have to check for. Uh, thanks for watching.